Uh, so let's begin. My name is Selena. I'm developer advocate for Graal VM at Oracle Labs, and that is what we'll be talking about today. I will be speaking in English because my German vocabulary, unfortunately, is not enough to present a technical talk. But if you want to have some fun, join me afterwards, and I will try to practice uh, that little German that I know. Uh, so Graal VM, what it is, what it can do for you, where you can use it, and why you should actually care about it. So Graal VM started quite a while ago, about seven years ago, as a research project at Oracle Labs. That's the organization where I work. And uh, what we do at Oracle Labs is trying to identify, research, and implement new technologies that hopefully will be needed somewhere in the future. And Graal VM started as one of those research projects back then, too. And we have quite a solid academic base behind GraalVM, so that's like lots and lots of research papers. And if you are curious about some parts of it, like partial evaluation and some others, you can check those papers at our website. And yeah, they are actually interesting to read, and I think you can learn a lot from them, not as complicated as one might think hearing about academic papers. So let's talk about GraalVM. Uh, yeah, please don't make any purchasing decisions based on the content of this presentation, even if you like it very much. So what is GraalVM? It's a new kind of virtual machine, and to describe it in one sentence, you can say that it is efficient, so it is optimized to be really high performance for a wide set of languages. It is embeddable, so there are really many, many scenarios and platforms where you can use GraalVM. And also, it is polyglot, so it really enables polyglot programming in a seamless and very high-performance way, which we will see later on in the presentation. Uh, so as I mentioned, there is a lot of research behind GraalVM, and the original purpose of this research and project itself was to find a solution to some of common challenges which are currently still present in the programming world, because as advanced as the current programming is, there are still those few common challenges, like for example, not all of even popular programming languages still have at the moment, high performance implementation, because usually it requires some kind of industry level backup behind the language for it to get this high performance implementation. Because uh, virtual machines and uh, compilers and this kind of things are really uh, high uh, effort, require a lot of effort to be implemented, because that's a lot of work needs to be done. And also, typical common virtual machines that we are all used to usually implement only one language or rather a wide uh, set of narrow set of languages, and perhaps there is a better way to deal with it. So with all that in mind, our team started research project, and currently I'm happy to share with you where it is today, share with you some recent project updates that I'm personally very excited about, and also show you some practical examples of what it can do for you. Uh, so why GraalVM? Here is a quick overview of what we'll be talking about today. First of all, it can make your Java and JVM applications run really fast, and you can think of it as a drop-in replacement. So there, there is no uh, really big effort for you to run your programs on GraalVM. You don't need to do any like adaptation for it to be compatible with GraalVM. You just take it, or you run your program on GraalVM, you get a better performance as it is. Second, what it can offer for you is instant startup and low memory footprint with our native images technology, which allows you, which allows you to compile Java programs ahead of time and get this native binary, which starts really fast and consumes so much less memory than the traditional setup. Also, it is polyglot and embeddable, meaning that it works for various sets of languages and platforms, so you can kind of enrich your existing platform and your existing application with new capabilities that GraalVM can offer to you. Uh, so let's take a closer look uh, at GraalVM. So if there is like one thing for you to remember from this presentation, I would like if that was this slide, because it offers what it can do for you. So on top here, we can see programming languages and below the platforms where you can use GraalVM. And you can think of it like a mix and match principle where you can choose whatever you need, whatever you're working with, or whatever is the uh, setup that you would like to switch to. So as I mentioned, we can run your normal Java GVM applications. And in this case, we are talking about this first use case when we are running applications in the context of OpenJDK. So it is important to remember that GraalVM itself includes 
full scale, full volume GVM, so your normal apps would work just the same way on GraalVM and uh, will most likely get additional performance boost. So it's not only about a head of time compilation, it can do uh, regular just-in-time compilation too, and you can choose whatever mode you're working, you want to work with. Also, except for Java GVM languages, we also support dynamic languages and native languages, which, which is why we said that we can give you this variety of use cases where you can use GraalVM and what it can really do for you. So we support JavaScript, Ruby, R, Python, and also what is interesting, we also support native languages like C, C++, basically wherever you can compile down to LLVM bitcode, GraalVM can run for you because we have LLVM bitcode uh, interpreter here in our GraalVM distribution. Talking about platforms where you can use GraalVM, I already said about OpenJDK, and also it can be used uh, uh, in Node.js, and another interesting use case is that you can use it in Oracle Database or in MySQL, so there is really a lot of opportunities for you to, for example, get JavaScript and, for example, use some kind of validation right in your database, which is pretty interesting because you can use uh, libraries and tools from various ecosystems right where you're working in. And the last but not least is here a standalone mode where GraalVM can run your programs completely independently, meaning that it will compile it down to this native binary and it will not have any external dependencies and will, will be fully working, fully functional by itself and, as I mentioned, starting really fast and consuming so much less resources. Um, let's take a closer look at what's inside and to do that I want to ask you how many of you have heard about GraalVM before? A lot of people, I'm really happy. And how many of you have tried using it? Uh, not so much. I hope that maybe after this presentation, a few more of you will try it. And if you try, please get back to us and say what was the result, if you are happy, if it's working for you or not. So what I want to share with you is global VM architecture. So at the bottom here, you can see your normal hotspot VM, which is used as a platform. And you can see that Graal compiler is kind of plugged into it. So something like this became possible since Java 9, when GVM CI was introduced, GVM compiler interface, with which you can now plug in external compiler and kind of have this flexibility to compare performance of your application when it's running with different compilers and choose whatever works best for you. On top of it, you can see Truffle. Truffle is our language implementation API, and all of the languages you can, you can see above are implemented with Truffle. So since they are all implemented having this one approach, it, uh, it enables this very smooth, high-performance inter interoperability between languages, and also it makes it fairly easy for us to add more languages to the platform. So I hope that soon we will add more and more languages and use cases to this slide. And also what is interesting, you can also, uh, if you have some, let's say, custom programming languages that, for example, you developed in your company and you are looking for some platform to run it on, uh, it is possible for you to implement your language and run it on GraalVM platform and have this access to the whole ecosystem and the all tools that GraalVM is offered, which is pretty cool. And there is already one of the existing uh, examples of companies who already have done it, and I will mention it later on in the presentation. So uh, just to go a little deeper into what GraalVM can offer you, here are all the languages that we currently support. And one thing that I didn't mention that appeared on this slide is Sulon. So Sulon is our LLVM bitcode interpreter, so that's our way of running native languages on GraalVM. Uh, how to get started? If, in case you are interested and you want to get started, there are a few simple ways to do that. First of all, I recommend you go into GraalVM.org, where you can download GraalVM, or you can go deeper into documentation, for example, for your particular use case, or read our manual of how to get started. Also, if you are using one of the latest Java releases, the compiler part of GraalVM you already can use in your Java distribution. You just need to enable using an external compiler, and you can at least this part, the compiler part, you can use straight in your current setup and see how it is performing for you. Talking about compiler, I want to mention for you a few words like what's 
cool about Graal VM because often when people talk about Graal, they mean compiler. So why is it cool? Why are people talking about it? First of all, it's brand new, so it's written from scratch and it's written itself in Java. So in case you are interested in things like that, you can just go to our GitHub repository and dig inside and understand the way it is written. Uh, it integrates with the hotspot VM in the way we've seen before through the compiler interface. And also it has these high performance capabilities for a wide uh, set of languages that it can support. Uh, and yeah, this is the way it is uh, interacting with Hotspot VM. And what is interesting about this new approach is that in case if you wanted to go deeper, I don't know if you, somebody of you have tried uh, digging really deep into the way Hotspot VM works, but in case you have tried it, I assume you know that it uh, requires quite some time and effort unless you are a compiler engineer or researcher in the field because Hotspot VM, due to its various capabilities, is rather an advanced thing and it will take you quite some time to become an expert in it. With uh, external compiler, you can understand at least that part, the compiler part, fairly quick, because it is written in Java and it's public on GitHub, and I think if you are working with Java on basically everyday basis, uh, you can easily go through it and, and get a better understanding of how it works. Uh, let's see how it really works in practice, and I hope you appreciate my graphic design skills. Any of old games fans in here? Or is it just me? Yeah, more people than have tried Graal VM. That's an interesting stat. So yeah, I wanna show you this uh, performance uh, demo. Just one second. So I have one benchmark here and I will show you what it does now. So it's a fairly simple and quick benchmark. What it does, it just gets this set of ints over here, maps them to new values, and performs the reduce operation here in the end. That's what it does, and the setup of benchmark is that it will have one iteration of warm-up and three iteration of the actual measurement, and the winner, the winning setup, will be the one with uh, uh, lower numbers because the uh, unit of measurement is nanoseconds per operation, meaning that lower numbers mean that your application is performing better. So let's run it. Normally I would go like this, uh, Java, jar, and just give it my benchmark, but I want to run it in GVM with different compilers. So what I wanna do the first time, I wanna disable Graal, because in my setup, it's enabled by default, one second. Yeah, it should run. Yeah, so it's running right now, and it's using the default Hotspot VM compiler right now, and this way, if we are disabling and enabling compiler itself, we will see the difference that the compiler brings to the setup, because the rest of the setup is completely equal, so one thing that is changing is the compiler, and we can see which compiler will be performing better for our particular use case, for our benchmark. So you see the numbers are around like 170 something nanoseconds per operation, and right now as we will finish the last iteration, we will get the average, and then we will run, we will run another round on Graal compiler. So the score is 170 nanoseconds per operation, and let's do the same thing with the Graal compiler. Um, let's maybe um, do it in a more interactive way. Who thinks that the second setup would be faster? Not very optimistic people in here. Those of you who think that Graal compiler would be faster, how do you think, like, would it be, let's say, 5%, 10%, how much faster? 50? 15? Five zero, okay, got it. Uh, any other bets? Fifty percent is actually a lot. I mean, if you can make your application run fifty percent faster, I think you would be very happy with that. Anyone else want to make a bet? 
once again. Sergeant here, here. Okay, got it. I think it must have been finished for now. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so our score is 9.7, and if you remember the first time it was 170, which means that it's around 17x speed up. So one important notice here to remember is that the numbers will obviously vary depending on your workload, on the way your application is written, on your machine, and this kind of things, because Obviously, when you're trying a new technology, you want to try it in a few setups and see what numbers will be in your particular case. But uh, yeah, what it shows is that speed up like this is possible, depending on your particular workload, and uh, that's perhaps the reason to try GraalVM for your application and see what's, what would be the numbers for your particular case. Uh, let's proceed. Yes, one, uh, one I want to, to tell you about also is our optimization. So in case you've been researching compilers a bit, you know about things like inlining and other kinds of optimizations. So Graal compiler uses slightly different uh, algorithm for uh, optimization, meaning that it, it's able to perform more aggressive optimization, reducing uh, object allocations, and this is why it is speeding up the, prog uh, the programs and giving you this performance boost. So yeah, definitely a reason to try it, because if you are uh, running high abstract programs, you want to reduce those object allocations so that it will take less memory, and even for long running applications, those optimizations will also be beneficial for you, so you might want to try it. Another thing that I want to mention here is our language implementation API. So that's the way we bring new languages to the platform. In case you wanted to bring your particular language to GraalVM platform too, what you need to, write, to do is to write an interpreter in Java, and then you will get access to the platform and will be able to run your language on our platform. So that's the way we implement our languages that run on GraalVM platform, and that's the way you can implement one too. And we have a manual on how you can put your language, what you need to do that, and if you're interested, give it a try. Uh, so yeah, here is where it stands in our overall chart. So all of the languages that you see above are implemented with our language implementation API, and obviously things like Java and GVM we can run just with this hotspot VM and Graal compiler bond. That is enough for that. Uh, Another thing that I want to mention here is our polyglot capabilities. So as I mentioned, GraalVM can run polyglot programs in an efficient way. Uh, so it can run, for example, things like Java, uh, JavaScript, R, Python, and Ruby in context of Java application. It can give you all the things that you are used to, like, for example, sandboxing mechanisms, and also it offers you zero overhead interrupts so that your, your applications keep on being performance. Uh, to use, for example, Ruby, R, or Python in Graal VM, you just need to run this one simple comment in your command line because uh, what you get from out of the box when you download Graal VM is things like Java, JavaScript, LLVM, and if you are interest, interested in these particular languages, you need to install them additional, which is fairly quick, and as you no longer need them, you can just the same way to install them and keep on working with what you need for now. I want to also show you an example of polyglot application written in a few languages and how it can work in GraalVM. I will show you what it does in a second. So as you can already say from the title, we have an application where we combine JavaScript, Java, and R in one file, and it's already up and running, so I can show you what it does. Yeah, and while it is building, uh, opening, I also want to show you the exact file, what I mean by saying that we have really a polyglot application. So you can see it's a, a JavaScript code over here, also, we have big integer coming from Java, Java type here, and here below is R. I don't know if somebody of you is working with R currently. 
like that's a language which is mostly used for things like statistic and data visualization, data processing, this kind of things. So here is what I get in the results. You can see all of those languages working together and here is what they produced and this cloud plot for example is coming from R and I can show you that it's rebuilding each time, so each time we have new results here. So the very first request in the case of polyglot application will take slightly longer because we need to initialize three languages context. Like as you remember, there is JavaScript, Java, and R, and we need to initialize all of that. But as I uh, update the page, as I get all the next requests, it's working really fast, and that is something that you can definitely try. Uh, so getting back to the presentation, um, yeah, one more thing that I want to add about polyglot. So obviously it might not be the case that you work with uh, multiple languages on your everyday uh, work life, but it might be the case that, for example, you have this Java application or Node.js application, and at some point, as it always happens, there is a new thing that you need to implement, and most likely it can have uh, implementation in different languages. Let's say you, can, you, ha you have currently Java application and you want to use something, let's say, from Node.js ecosystem or other language. And instead of rewriting your whole application in another language, which obviously is too much effort, it doesn't really make sense, you can use GraalVM just to use this particular library on this particular tool from another ecosystem, and you will save yourself so much more time and trouble instead of rewriting the whole thing. So I think that that could be a practical case for polyglot applications. And if that is something that you face, for example, at your work or with your pet project, I think it is worth trying it and seeing how it works for you. Uh, talking about performance, any Scala developers in here? Oh. I'm happy that you are here. So talking about Scala, what we can offer for Scala, there is a whole article about GraalVM Scala offerings, and if you're interested, I can point to you after the talk. So what we can offer for Scala is better performance. Uh, here on the chart, you can see GraalVM CE and GraalVM EE, which stands for Community Edition and Enterprise Edition. These are two editions that we currently offer. So for Community Edition, which is open source and which is completely free, to use in production, we can use it even today and in production, and we will be happy if you do that. So for community edition, we get around 10% speed up on these examples that we've run, and for enterprise edition, if we get even more, which is up to 25, 35%. Uh, and I have a good example for you of, uh, of a company who is already using GraalVM to speed up their Scala uh, microservices, anyone knows Twitter? I assume so, yeah. So Twitter is using Graal VM, uh, specifically Graal compiler, which is an open source uh, version of our compiler, to run their Scala microservices, and they get nice speed outs over there. So uh, if you keep exploring Graal VM, I recommend you also check in a uh, YouTube video or articles from Chris Stellinger, who is working on Twitter. He is a VM engineer there. So he reports on what they do with Graal compiler and how they use it actually in production to speed up some of the Twitter microservices. So that's a good example to uh, check if you're interested, for, for example, in Scala. Talking about JavaScript, uh, what we can offer is that GraalVM, GraalVM's JavaScript implementation is up to date with the latest JavaScript standards and also it's high performant. So comparing, for example, to Nethorn here, who is used, which is used as a reference point with like one all around the chart, we give something like 4x, 6x speed ups for, for your code. Uh, native images is another important part of GraalVM uh, technologies that I want to talk to you about. So native images, what it is, is uh, native binaries that you can build of your Java application so that they will start really fast and consume so much less memory. So they work with all the things that you are used to, like memory management, secure execution, because we have some kind of uh, virtual machine implementation built in into those binaries. And they are ahead of time compiled using the same Graal compiler. So you can see, uh, 
compared them to traditional setup, all of that is pre-compiled ahead of time, and that's the way you get this really fast uh, startup of your application. Uh, how it works from the inside is that we, uh, when you use our native images utility, starting from the main method of your application, we analyze everything that is reachable from there, we pack it into this one file, then we inline it, uh, get this one file done, and you can use it in various environments to start your application really fast. Uh, what it goes, also goes with is image heap, uh, so it starts with a kind of snapshot of your heap so that you can start, start really fast and uh, get benefits, for example, in environments like microservices or cloud. I want to show you how it works. I have a small application here and we will build a native image of this application together. So what I have here is this list dear Java and I will show you what it does in a second. So first I need to compile it to bytecode because as an input for native images I will need bytecode and as I have it I can now build a native image of it. So it started building and I want to show you the exact application so that you can have an idea of what it does. So it's fairly simple and quick. Uh, what it does, it just goes through directory, looks for the files over there, counts their size, counts their number, and outputs this information to us. And we will run it in two setups, like traditional Java setup and native image setup, to see what is the difference that it brings. So when I look now at my folder, I see this list dear binary over here, and let's see how it performs. So I will run it with the regular Java command fast and, uh, first, and I will time it so that we can see the exact numbers, what is the difference. And the second time, I will run my binary. Yeah, so you see that I output, this program outputs the exact same information, so we found eight files, here is total size, but the time it takes to run a program is uh, order of magnitude different, and I will show you another example in a second. So talking about another example, here, is, uh, here are two charts which show you time consumption and memory consumption of native image comparing to regular GVM setup. So on uh, upper chart here it's time and below memory and on time chart you can barely see this green color because it starts really, really fast. And memory that it consumes is also so much lower. Also I want that that was like a brief introduction into what GraalVM can do for you. And also, as the project has been around for a while, I want to show with you, share with you a few uh, recent updates. So one is uh, libgraal. Uh, that is our version of Graal compiler, which is pre-compiled ahead of time using our other component, which is native images. So with native images, we pre-compiled uh, Graal compiler ahead of time. And in addition to improving startup, what it offers is avoid interfering with your application uh, heap so you can get more precise JIT profile gathering. And since RC15, uh, it's now the default setup when you're using our Java command or when using our GVM mode. So now it's, it became default setup. And uh, yeah, the release when this was introduced as a default setup setup was launched this Friday, last week. So it's pretty new and I recommend you trying it and seeing how it works for you. Another thing that I want to mention is Isolate, which is multiple virtual machine instances running in one 
process, and obviously they are not interfering with each other, so you can avoid additional garbage collection and things like that. And one more thing, talking about native images, is that now we have this Maven plugin, which allows you to uh, work with native images even faster. You can generate them straight from your IDE and build them faster and use them in your everyday production. Talking about use cases of the companies which are currently using Graal VM, so I mentioned Twitter, which is using open source version of our compiler, and you can find many talks of Chris sharing the exact numbers and a lot of uh, behind the scenes information of how the, this compiler is working for them, so I recommend you check in this one. Another example that I particularly like very much is coming from Goldman Sachs. There is also this talk publicly available. So the thing I liked about it is that they have their own uh, programming language that they created something like 25 years ago because back at the time there wasn't a really relevant language for things like uh, financial operation and risk management and stuff so that they had to create it themselves in-house and obviously after 25 years it has gained a lot of uh, a lot of uh, code, a lot of things to consider. So right now they're trying to bring it on GraalVM platform and get access to all the things that GraalVM is offering as a platform. And those were a few examples where you can use GraalVM. Obviously there are lots and lots uh, more of them. If you remember that chart with all the languages and all the platforms that you can use, here are some more. You can check this article of top 10 things that you can do with Graal VM, and it offers you even more details of the use cases. And just to summarize, here's what you can do with Graal VM. First of all, you can make your Java JVM applications run faster, and it's a drop-in replacement, meaning that it does not require any additional effort from your site. Also, if you are working with cloud and microservices, give native images a try. Most likely, that is something that will be beneficial for an environment like this. Also, it is polyglot and embeddable, meaning that whatever platform you are working with, most likely you can add even more functionality to it by using GraalVM. And it offers interoperability between different languages, which is smooth and really high performance. To get started, go to GraalVM.org. And uh, yeah, important thing is that we would like to hear from you feedback, like if GraalVM is working for you and giving you high performance, we would be happy to hear about it because we keep collecting feedback as relatively new products. Also, we have the subscription list and of a public uh, GitHub repository. And if you have a question, if you have an issue, if something uh, requires more information which is not in our documentation or something, we have a few Gitter chat rooms where you can uh, reach out to our engineers directly and they will help you to resolve those issues. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, thank you. And if you have some questions or feedback or something else, please uh, come to me here and I'll be happy to answer those. Thank you.